So now we're going to leave these mid-level um, feature kinds of regions for color, shape, and motion. And now we're going to talk about um, regions that, that process specific categories of stimuli, like faces, places, and bodies. Okay, so we've already talked about the fusiform face area right here. And we're going to briefly talk about regions that respond selectively to places and regions that respond selectively to bodies there. Okay, okay what's the evidence for that? So I talked about this before. This is a kind of sketch of the kind of evidence that the fusiform face area responds very selectively to faces. I won't go through it again, but there are just lots of different kinds of face stimuli that all produce a very strong response there. Lots of different kinds of control stimuli that produce a much lower response. Backs of heads much lower, so it's not just any human head. Uh, uh, animals without their faces showing, low response. Um, large objects, hands, all of these things enable you to triangulate. And some, uh, some cases where you have an inverted face or a face missing eyes, you still get a strong response, but it's lower than if it's the whole face, all of which is consistent with the idea that that region is selectively responsive to faces. Okay, everybody remember that and clear on this? Okay, that's the kind of evidence that the face area is selective for faces. What else do we see? Well, this region here, called the parahippocampal place area. This, these are now slices oriented like this through the brain, okay? And so this shows you a region sitting deep in the middle of the brain on both sides, somewhere in there approximately, okay? Way in the middle. That region responds very selectively to images of places and scenes, pictures like this, okay? It doesn't matter if it's, you know, Kresge Oval, Oval or, you know, someplace out in Arizona or the inside of your living room, or even, importantly, the inside of your living room with all of the furniture missing, so it's just two walls and a floor. In all of those cases, you get a strong response from this region and a much lower response to all kinds of other things, like, for example, faces. Like, the, the zero response to faces means this, the same response in that region when you look at faces as when you stare at a dot. That's our baseline zero. Okay, so we'll talk more about, um, about this region next week. I just mentioned it now as it's another category selective region on the ventral visual pathway. Okay, everybody got the picture here? Okay, so it raises all kinds of questions of what is it for and how do we use it and we'll talk about all of that. But importantly, you guys might already have some clues. Remember the story I told on the first day of class about Bob, who never has any idea where he is and can't get around in the world. Well, this is one of the regions that is presumably implicated in Bob, involved in navigating around and knowing where you are. Okay, we'll talk more about that. What else? Okay, very briefly, this region out on the lateral surface, quite near LO and MT, okay, in me again, somewhere, I don't know, right about there in me, bilateral, this region totally crazily responds to pictures of bodies and body parts. Okay, this, we just stumbled into this region um, 15 years ago. We didn't predict it, it came out of a broad screen. It's like, what the hell is that? But loads of testing in our lab and many other labs now have really nailed this. This region is very selectively responsive to pictures of bodies and body parts. It's not interesting stuff. We s steer away from that. We don't want attentional confounds in our experiments. So it's, you know, pictures like these. Importantly, even stick figures of bodies produce a much stronger response here than scrambled stick figures. Again, making at least a, you know, a decent argument that it's probably not just the low-level visual properties of the stimulus that are driving it. Instead, it really seems to be something about bodies. Okay? All right. So uh, we'll talk more about this region uh, in April when we get to social perception. But for now, I just mentioned it as another one of these selectivities in the ventral visual pathway. Okay, so what else? Well, uh, after we found the body area, we thought, well, God, you know, faces, places, bodies, where is this going to end? Is there a patch of brain for every category you look at? Well, it can't be. There isn't room in there. Um, and so we just, okay, what the hell? We'll do a broad screen. So we did this experiment where we scanned subjects looking at 20 different categories of objects. And this is kind of an under-constrained enterprise. We just thought, you know, anything for which we could make a remotely plausible story that maybe there's a special patch of brain for that region, like, I don't know, scary things. There were spiders and snakes in there, weapons, food, um, 
plants, you name it. We thought, what the hell, we'll test it, okay? So we ran that experiment, scanning subjects, looking at all of these different kinds of stimuli with lots of different exemplars of each of these 20 different categories. And then we looked at their brain's response and we asked whether there were regions that responded selectively to any of these individual categories or maybe groups of categories. And our basic finding is that in every subject, we replicated selectivity for faces, places, and bodies in the regions I just showed you. And pretty much, we find no evidence for selectivity for any of these other things. Okay, so it's not the case that you have a special little patch of brain for every single category of object that you can see and recognize. Okay? That said, it's very easy to not see something that's there in the brain. And so making a strong negative claim based on the fact that we looked and we didn't see evidence for this, we have to be very careful. Okay? What we can say is that the selectivity for faces, places, and bodies are so robust that you pop any subject in the scanner and in 10, 20 minutes of data collection, you see them crystal clear in pretty much every subject. Very robust. And at that level, we don't find evidence for any of these other things. Okay? What are some of the ways that selectivities for, say, musical instruments uh, might live somewhere in visual cortex that we didn't see with functional MRI? Is that possible? How would that be? Maybe it's very small. Absolutely. Maybe it's even, you know, 10 million neurons, but they're not all spatially clustered together. They're interleaved with a bunch of other things, right? Then we'll just never see it. Absolutely. Everybody got that? So when you see something, that's great. And when you see some things really clearly and no evidence for anything else, that's probably suggestive, but we need to be very careful about any of the specific negative claims, okay? Maybe somebody will come along with a seven Tesla scanner and scan at higher resolution and then they'll find it. All right. Also, I should note that this is an active area where people disagree. There are a lot of claims in the literature about regions that respond selectively to tools or regions that respond specifically to hands. They're not on my diagram because I don't find them. I'm a little suspicious of the claims that those things exist, but this is in play. There's no clear answer, and many people think there are tool regions and hand regions. Yes? Ah, oh, great question. Aren't you dying to know? Me too. Okay. Nobody exactly knows. We'll talk uh, in two weeks, I think, about how all this stuff develops. Exactly. I think that's exactly the right question. You look at all this structure. It's there in everyone. It's weird and particular and specific and systematic. How the, where does it come from? What is it about? We'll talk a lot about that. Not now, though. Okay. All right. Um, I'll let you percolate on what other categories you might want to look for and why those and why not others. And it's very relevant to your question of are we born with them or do we learn them? That might give you, the answer to that might give you predictions about what to look for and vice versa. Okay, so that was just whirlwind of what I mean by sticking these blobs up there. Um, okay, so why do we have so many cortical areas in the first place? Um, actually, I think I'm going to let you percolate on this question. There's a slide on it, but I'm going to skip over it for now and stick it in later because I want to get to some of the other stuff here. Okay, it's a really deep question. It's kind of the biggest question here. Why would you design a brain like this? If you were designing a machine vision system, would you build in the special purpose machinery? Okay, so we will get back to that. Um, but instead, I want to point out first a few simplifications here. This is really a ridiculous simplification. So first of all, there's more than one of these in each hemisphere. Current view is something a little more like this, depending on how you count them, a few of each. Uh, second of all, the borders are not that sharp, so we'll blur them a little bit to acknowledge that there's some muck around the edges. It's actually worse than that, muckier than that. Uh, but the big picture that emerges from all of this is that some regions of the brain process a single specific kind of information. Okay, that's big news. All right. And people in our field have been fighting about that for 200 years. I used to do a whole lecture on the history of this idea in the field, and then every, I thought it was riveting, and everyone else thought it was boring. So I'm now doing this completely ahistoric thing as if this question came out of nowhere. But this is sort of the central question in human cognitive neuroscience that people have been viciously attacking each other about for 200 years. When I first published the paper on the fusiform face area, all of these people came out of the woodwork. They'd already been fighting about this issue with each other, and all of a sudden they found a new target, me. And they all attacked me, because I was claiming that there's a piece of the brain that does this very specific thing. So it's a long-standing question, 
And I think the evidence from these regions is now very strongly supportive um, of this idea that at least some patches of cortex do very specific things.